Hello, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, before we get started, I want to take just a moment and show you my brand new tattoo. It's of a Klingon bird of prey. Pretty cool, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Galactic Era from CJ Games. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. In Galactic Era from CJ Games, one to six players take on the role of a various faction as they attempt to dominate the galaxy. Now the game board here is a bunch of interchangeable uh, maps uh, that you can use of uh, stars and, and nebulae and asteroid uh, belts and what have you. You go ahead, you arrange those together depending on player order. Uh, then what you're going to do is each player is going to be assigned two different uh, uh, factions. They're going to be dealt out two different factions. They can look and choose which faction they want to be for the game. Players next are going to go ahead and set on the board, um, in the various stars on the board, various tokens saying whether or not these places are inhabited. There's also going to be some relic tokens in the, in the center area there too with some more powerful uh, uh, things that will help them out. Players are also going to collect their very own kind of population track and their science track as well as they will gain a card, a domination card that will help them gain points throughout the game. Off to the side, there's also kind of a point scoring track, and with that also is a special goal that you're going to pick out. You're going to select one of many goals or randomly select this goal and place it there. That will give a special uh, bonus uh, at the end of the game. Now, this game has a few interesting concepts. You have your faction called the Star People, and your Star People faction can either essentially be good or evil. This is called uh, service to self or service to others, peaceful or warlike. So essentially, you have to decide uh, from kind of round to round, are you going to be peaceful or are you going to be aggressive? At the very first round, you go ahead and you select that. You also select for the uh, scoring track kind of the galactic story. And the galactic story kind of shows how you're going to score points points throughout that game. There's some iconography uh, that kind of tells you roughly how you're going to score points. So from, from turn to turn, how you're going to score. Now, typically the people who are um, peaceful at the beginning are going to score well and at the end are going to score well. But in the center, usually the factions that are warlike are going to score better. The game plays out over a series of eight rounds, I believe, and what you're going to do then is at the very beginning of the game, each player is going to receive a uh, token that shows their turn order throughout the game. Now, you're going to maintain this turn order throughout the game unless somebody takes an action that can change that. More on that later. Now, on your very first turn, what you can do is organize fleets. Essentially, you have a number of spaceships, and if you want, what you can do is you can consolidate them into a fleet. The game comes with a number of uh, like poker chips that have numbers on them uh, that kind of will stand in for your ships. And what you can do is take a little kind of like a pizza table thing in the middle, whatever that is, and you can place the chips on top of that as well as your fleet designation. You've got five fleets, A through E, I believe, and they each have their own kind of special power so you can go ahead and you place that uh, token on top of that and that way you can build a, a lot of different fleets so you can at the very first thing on your turn you can reorganize fleets you can build new fleets etc etc 
Next, you can go ahead and move, and you can move depending on whatever your propulsion level is on your science track. You can move that number of spaces with your ships. Uh, there's also certain, like for terrain effects, like I think if you go into a nebula, you I think you have to stop immediately, or, or no, it takes you two more to enter a nebula, I think, and then you also get a, a bonus going out of a nebula. So there is some kind of terrain um, effects when you when you move around the board. Now, if ever you are at war with another faction, and this is indicated by a token, other player's color that is either on the dove or on kind of a battle, <clears throat> if you're at war or peace with them, if you move your ships into one of their systems uh, where they have other ships, you can then immediately engage in combat. Now, combat in this game is largely determinative. Essentially, what you're going to do is add up the number of... Uh, combat points you have and this is based on the number of ships you have plus whatever mil military technology you have that gives you the number and then the other player does that as well uh, they go ahead and they add that up you compare your combat strengths now if you have more combat strength then you win and the player who loses you can destroy a number of their ships um, but then you must lose half of your ships as well now there's a few other things going on with combat but that's kind of basically how it works I believe also, too, if one of the players has like a, a 3 to 1 ratio, then um, they're not going to take any losses in that battle. Now, after the move combat phase, you're going to go into the growth phase. Now, how the growth phase works is you have a number of tiles, um, these kind of oval tiles that represent different actions you're going to take. Now, you have two of them are essentially kind of populate uh actions where you play them and you can go ahead and put more population on the worlds that you have provided there's some rules that have to be a certain distance from other other populated worlds um, you go ahead and do that but you also get bonuses that you can then just kind of build up the population on your your various star systems um, but also too you can colonize planets now if you colonize a planet you there's a marker on it it says whether it's uninhabitable in which case doesn't matter if you're peaceful or warlike you can you can go ahead and put a marker down there uh, I think you have to have a ship present if you are warlike if the if the um, planet is uh, if the star system rather is uh, inhabited with a primitive society if you're warlike you have to conquer it um, if you if it's like an advanced one again you'd have to conquer it. you have to have like four ships there but if you're peaceful you can ally with them so there's different things that are going to happen depending on what you find in those uh, in those star systems now you can also at this time switch your alignment you can move from peaceful to uh warlike or warlike to peaceful at this time as well you can also build ships. Um, you build ships based on its uh, the number of uh, population you have, and of course you're taking your population from your population tracker and putting them on the board. So when, what that reveals, that gives you that number of ships if you're in that in that section. Um, but also too, based on your robotics um, technology, that will also add the number of ships that you can build as well. You can also take a research action, which can boost your um, regular technology by allowing you to draw more more technology tiles. Now, just as critical, when you reveal those two oval tiles um, to take actions, you're also revealing a square tile. Now, one of your smaller square tiles is either technology. It's it's one, and then possibly later more technology as you as you get further along. But when you reveal this, you essentially can move up one space in that technology track. But um, you can, instead of choosing a technology, you can flip over a change turn order. And you can do that clockwise or counterclockwise to shift the turn order um, one way or the other during the course of the game. Next, you have the trade phase. Now, if you are in contact with another um, player, meaning if you have ships that are adjacent to their worlds or their ships, you can go ahead and exchange technology. If they have a technology that's you know higher than you in one level, level, and you have a technology that's higher than them in one level, you can swap and you can kind of negotiate that. There are some races that trade tech with everybody and they get points for it. So there's some different ways you're trading technology and growing your technological abilities with your civilization. Finally, you have the scoring. So essentially, you're looking at where you are in that round. You're seeing what points you get for that. Um, at the end of rounds two, sometimes you can go ahead and you can play your domination cards. Domination cards are going to tell you exactly, um, uh, you know, if you've met certain criteria, you can go ahead and score them as well. And also, at the beginning of some rounds, you can swap out those cards so you're not stuck with them for the whole game. So there's different things you can do here in order to gain points. 
So as I say, you're, you're, you're going around and around, you're doing these things uh, over the course of eight rounds. You are moving your ships, you are having fighting your enemies, you are declaring wars, you are making peace, you are building up your population on the worlds you control, you're trying to gain new worlds, you are developing your technology, and you are building bigger and better fleets. So all these things are going on. And then at the end of the eighth round, you go ahead, you look, uh, see who's qualified for kind of the, the bonus, <clears throat> the goal to get even more points. You add up all the points you made in the game from all your cards and anything else, and whoever has the most points wins. Galactic Era. Okay, so there is a ton more going on in this game. There is a lot more going on in this game uh, than what I just discussed here. Um, quite a bit more. Uh, there's a lot of a, a lot of rules that handle getting to the, kind of the nuances of, as I say, combat and, and research and and a few other aspects to the game and movement and, and blocking and you, you can't build ships right where there's enemy ships are located. So there's 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 all sorts of things like that in this game. <clears throat> now, this is a game that is attempting to do what many other games have done in the past, and that is create a two to three hour Twilight Imperium experience, right? Many other games have attempted this. And Galactic Era is now taking its shot. As you know, Twilight Imperium 4th Edition is probably my second favorite game of all time. It was my first for a long time. Um, so I'm always very, very critical when I see games like this because I kind of think it's it's a lot harder than you think to make that, that experience in such a short time. Part of the Twilight Imperium experience is the game's length. So how well does it do it? Well, let's take a look. There's a lot of things in this game that I find are derivative of other games. You've got those fleets that are moving around, and there's a fog of war element. I actually really like this. Um, you can even create dummy fleets, right? You know, you don't know how strong somebody is. So you know if you get into a contest, you, you, just, you just don't know. Now there is uh, a remote viewing um, technology where you can look at other people's stuff that will kind of help you gain an edge in war. Um, but really, fundamentally, you you don't know what's coming at you, all things being equal. And I like that. I like the fog of war. To me, this felt a lot, that aspect of the game felt a lot like Space Empires 4X, where you, again, you have the, the chits turned over, the counters turned over, and you have counters that are like dummy fleets and stuff like that. It felt very much like, like Space Empires 4X there. Um, I really like, too, the population. You've got these little cool population things that actually stack, and they come off your population board, and they go right on there, and that's pretty cool. And, and, and when you take them off the population board, it reveals more stuff. And that aspect reminded me very, very much of Eclipse, and the way Eclipse, you take the, the cubes off, and that reveals more resources for you. So, so again, I found that somewhat, somewhat derivative there. One thing that we all, pretty much everyone that's playing the game, really liked and that really kind of stood out was kind of the basic way technology works where you have the I think five different tracks of technology and you advance your cubes on each one to show where you are but then again you could trade some of that technology um, and and it, it 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 just it felt like it was a very fun um, and, and a good way to kind of measure technology in this kind of a game um, it, 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 it worked. It was just good. We were all impressed with that aspect of the game as well. I like the maps. I think the maps look good. The, 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 um, they're big giant hexes with a bunch of little hexes in them that you can arrange however you want. They're different. They're double-sided. That's good. I really got a kick out of that. Um, I think artwork is generally good. You got the different races that, 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 that look pretty uh, decent and pretty good on there, and I like that as well. But there are some concepts here um, I had kind of a hard time getting on board with. And the first one is that kind of good and evil, you flip your guys over, and then that's such an important part of the game. I, I kind of felt a little limited because, uh, you know, and I, and I see what they're going for there, um, but it, it, it felt like there were opportunities you couldn't really take because you were the wrong alignment, and that, that kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. I wasn't completely on board with that. I didn't completely appreciate it. Um, and, and the fact that it is so important, and you're not going to score points if you're not at the right alignment in, in the, at the right time. And I, and I get it's a way to kind of encourage combat and encourage going, people going out, but it, it felt very artificial. It just did. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't a terribly big fan of that aspect of the game.
One other thing too that was really weird is it's got the scoring board. And the scoring board like goes up to like 40 or something, but when you're playing all the the when you get a lot of the stuff coming in, you're you're well over 40. And there may have been there, there's a lot of stuff in this box and there may have been something in there I missed, uh, some counter or something I missed. But it's hard to keep track of that. There may be like a plus 40 thing on there. But it, it's hard when it doesn't go to 100, right? Because when it goes to 100, then you, you can just go, oh, you can just loop it, and it's fine, and it, and it makes sense. And this one, it didn't. You'd, you'd get up over 100, and it would, it would not work that well. So I didn't like that aspect. That was kind of disappointing as well. The game is, at the end of the day, too fiddly. It's too fiddly. There's too much they're trying to pack into this experience and, 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 and for what it is. This is a game that I feel like if they had been willing to let it go a little longer and be a little bit more of an immersive experience in, this, in, in the time it took to, to really play it and really discover it, maybe some of that would have worked. But here, like I say, there's just so many little rules. And, and you've got an... And one of the big problems here is you've got so many... Um, you got so much iconography, and it's everywhere. Now, I don't mind iconography. You need iconography. But here it's like iconography overload. You've got this big um, thing that, that's got everything on there, but it's like that tells you what it is. But then the way it's arranged on the actual cards and stuff, you got to consult the rulebook because the rulebook's got like an appendix and it's got all the stuff written out in there, which is all well and good. But in a game like this, you just want to say, oh, that means that, that means that, instead of having to look it all up. So there's kind of some iconography overload that contributed to that sense of fiddliness. Now, the game box, as I say, has a ton of stuff in it. The cards, the, 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 the cards that come out, um, honestly, now that's, this is kind of the opposite. I kind of feel like there should have been more of those cards. Maybe you could have more of those cards and, and, and get more ways to score there, but there's only relatively few of these, of these cards there. Um, but generally speaking, there's just, there's, there's kind of an overload in this box of stuff, which honestly can be a good thing if it all kind of feels like it works and it, and it, and it, and it, and it feels and it fits. And here it just feels like it, it it's making it fiddly and clunky. Um, what I'm what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of stuff about stuff about this game I liked, but there's so many concepts and so much iconography that just feel they don't need to be there. It feels too rulesy. It feels like there's there's too much baked onto the game to really get to the meat of the game or really enjoy the meat of the game. And I and I get where they're going because you're trying to create certain real world realities, you know, of, of a, you know, aggressor nations and passive nations or, or less aggressive nations, I should say. But I just, I just don't feel like it, it completely works here. I'm glad I played it. There's some fun stuff here and other people might enjoy it more than, more than we did. Nobody I played with thought this was a great game. We enjoyed aspects of it, but as a whole, it just kind of fell flat for all of us. Um, so honestly, I, I, I kind of feel, um, because there is, there, there is some fun stuff here and there's some aspects that of the game that I really do like, and I do like the choices in the growth phase and I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to say try it before you buy it, but, but just bear in mind, it is going to be a fiddly experience. I wish this game were just a hair more streamlined. I think it probably could have worked a lot better. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out. Please subscribe. And I'd also ask you to please leave a thumb to this video on BoardGameGeek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, this game is all about population and growing your population. And I've actually been thinking a lot about population in the world. For instance, India is poised within just a few years to become the most populous nation on earth, overtaking China. And uh, Ireland, the population of Ireland is just growing rapidly. The capital is Dublin.
discriminating gamer has reached 10,000 subscribers? I knew there was something wrong with the universe. Look at what's happened to my baby.